That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. July 20th, 1969, the culmination of nearly a decade of work that would lead to a half century of technological innovations. The Apollo program landed 12 men on the moon in a span of less than four years. All right, this is a neat way to travel. Isn't that great? But humans haven't been back since 1972. Now NASA wants to change that with the Artemis missions. In Greek mythology, Artemis was the twin sister of Apollo. In a nod to the female goddess, NASA plans to send the first woman, as well as the first person of color, to the lunar surface. The timeline has been a moving target. First planned for 2028, the bullseye is now 2025. But the goal is bigger than a few boots on the ground. This time, NASA wants to establish a permanent base on the moon. By learning how to live and work there, the hope is that astronauts will eventually take that knowledge to the next frontier, Mars. But for the next decade or so, the focus is on the moon. Here's how NASA would make it happen. Astronauts would travel to the moon on the Orion spacecraft, on top of the most powerful rocket NASA has ever built. Orion would then rendezvous with Gateway, a space station orbiting the moon. From there, astronauts would transfer to a reusable lunar lander built by a commercial partner like SpaceX. Unlike Apollo, the Gateway space station would allow access to more areas of the moon. It will also be the home of scientific experimentation and NASA plans to continually send astronauts to the moon for years to come after the first phase of Artemis. But getting there won't be easy. It is rocket science after all. We will not fly astronauts until it's safe. And if that means there's a delay, then we will delay. Already the Artemis program has suffered delays. Critical pre-launch tests have been hampered by issues with propellant loading and a malfunctioning helium check valve. The number one issue is safety, but all of that testing and tinkering doesn't come cheap. I want to urge you as an appropriations committee, don't short sheet space technology. We need that extra oomph in our research and development. The Artemis program has rare bipartisan support in Congress. You might be surprised, but I think we ought to be putting as many resources into it as we can. This subcommittee wants the next pair of boots on the moon to be made in the USA. And I'm pleased that this administration is continuing that goal. The Biden administration has proposed $7.5 billion for Artemis in fiscal 2023. But sustained funding isn't a guarantee. Unfortunately, across all major NASA programs, schedule slips and cost overruns have increased for the sixth consecutive year with cumulative overruns for your major project now exceeding $12.6 billion. In 2019, NASA estimated it would take 20 to $30 billion to get humans back to the moon. But NASA's inspector general says that won't even be close. It estimates the entire program will cost a whopping $93 billion by 2025. Whether it gets full funding or not, NASA stands firm that the lunar landing will happen. We're going back to the moon, but this time we're going back to learn, to stay, to develop new systems, new technologies, new techniques on how to live a long time in that hostile environment because when we go to Mars, we're gonna to have to have learned that. In 1969, Apollo took humanity to new heights. By 2025, Artemis could prepare it for new worlds.